Hello, welcome to LMU Tri-State News. I'm Ashley Hurley. Thank you for joining us for another edition of local and campus news, sports, and entertainment. Let's get started with this week's top stories. Now that school is officially out around the Tri-State area and the heat of summer is in full swing, many area residents have been getting on the water to have fun and to cool off. With more on that story, here's Rusty Peace. Weather here for the remainder of the summer months. Over the past several weeks, boaters throughout East Tennessee have been flocking to the area lakes in an effort to beat the heat, enjoy the sunshine, and spend time with family and friends. For the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency officers, however, the elevated number of lake goers have prompted the agency to step up their presence on the area lakes during the peak times of the week in an effort to help ensure that boaters have a safe and enjoyable time on the waters. Several things TWRA officers will be checking for during their routine stops are boaters registration, an adequate number of approved life jackets and throw cushions which are required on each vessel, that all children under the age of 12 are wearing their life jackets, and that each watercraft has an up-to-date and functional fire extinguisher. As Cavins explains, all of these things are essential to boat legally and safely on Tennessee waters. With Memorial Day being the weekend, of the kickoff to the boating season and the 4th of July and Labor Day, uh, the agency will uh, man two people per boat, step up patrol out here on the waterways to provide safety for recreational boaters on the water. This uh, routine inspection will consist of a U.S. Coast Guard approved personal flotation device for all of the passengers on board. Uh, remember that uh, children 12 and under must always wear their life jacket at all times while the boat is underway. Uh, make sure that you have a charged fire extinguisher a uh, type 4 throwable device which can be a ring buoy or a cushion and a valid registration card on your boat at all times. Our job is to uh, out here on while we're patrolling out here on the waterways is to detect and apprehend uh, those individuals that are suspected to be impaired by alcohol and or drugs and to remove those individuals from the waterway. And as far as the personal watercraft goes anybody that's operating a personal watercraft must wear a personal flotation device at all times while operating if you're born after January 1st, 1989, you must com complete, successfully complete a, a boater's education class or a NASBA approved class, and you need to have a fire extinguisher and a valid registration card on your PWC. Two of the biggest contributors to accidents on area lakes are reckless driving of personal watercraft and, of course, the excessive consumption of alcohol. While the use of personal watercraft and consumption of alcohol are both permitted while enjoying a day on the water, although not in combination, both have several guidelines that must be followed in order to be in compliance with state laws and regulations. The busiest time of the year on the area lakes for TWRA officers is the week surrounding the 4th of July holiday. During that period of time, the number of boaters will be at its peak, and with this year's celebration falling on Friday, the agency will again join forces with the area sheriff's department to better patrol East Tennessee waters in a hope that there will be a much safer Independence holiday experience for all. Reporting from Cedar Grove Marina on Norris Lake for Tri-State News, I'm Rusty Peace. A couple of other things Officer Cavins mentioned is that boaters want to be aware of this boating season are the islands or stumps that may be slightly submerged and a danger to boaters with lower lake levels and to always make sure before going out on the water that you have plenty of fuel and that your starting and trolling batteries are fully charged. Up next, we bring you LMU archivist Michelle Gans highlighting some of the many historical artifacts available for the public in the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum. It kind of has about 250,000 pieces of paper, all dedicated to the uh, study of Lincoln and the Civil War. Students are welcome to come here to do any sort of research they need to, um, whether it be for a class or for personal research. You do not have to be a graduate student. You do not have to be a doctoral student. Um, you just need to give me a call and make sure that I'm here and we're happy to accommodate you. So what we have here is two handkerchiefs. This one was Abraham Lincoln's and this was his wife's Mary Todd's. And uh, you'll notice here that one of the things I first noticed about this is how plain it is. And that's the interesting thing about Abraham Lincoln is that he was a very plain man. And you'll see here that she had hers embroidered. And uh, I'm always amazed at the, the beautiful needlework that they did here. Mary was far more concerned by what she looked like and how she was perceived by others. Lincoln was not. Um, because you can see this is a very tattered, he, he probably cut this out of a larger piece of cloth that was maybe an old shirt and decided to just go ahead and use that as a handkerchief. Whereas Mary quite obviously 
you know, said, here's what I want my handkerchiefs to look like, and, you know, go ahead and put this design on it. So she was much more concerned by the visual. This is actually a lock of Abraham Lincoln's hair that was cut by the surgeon who did his autopsy. And the one thing you'll notice here is that it's much lighter than his hair actually was. And what this is is an example of how the environment can actually damage an artifact. So because someone had this on display, the lights that they had in the room actually bleached out the hair. All of this material is available for you to use for whatever reason you want to use it. Um, so come by, so stop by and see me. Um, I am happy to show you any of this stuff. I'm happy to make copies of all this stuff. Um, and I'm happy to talk to you about uh, your research or about the Civil War in general. I will have to say that monetary value is often the last thing that we look at because what we have found is things that are worth the most money tend to have the least <laughs> value and the things that aren't worth very much monetarily have a great deal of value. So for me, an item is unique if, if or rare if if there are only one or two of them. In my mind, it's, it's rare if it's hard to replace. It's rare if it's hard to find. And one of the things that we always do here is when we're collecting books, we don't just look to see if it's rare um, for the world, we look to see if it's rare for this area. Because we are so far off the beaten path, if a researcher comes here, I want them to have all of the information they need here. Lincoln, it, he transcends he transcends time, he transcends countries, um, and we see this over and over again, including uh, a group of Angolan visitors that we had here. We started asking them questions about Lincoln, and I was astonished how much these, these people knew about Lincoln. And I asked them, I said, well, I mean, honestly, why do you know so much about Lincoln? And what they said is, we're involved in a civil war of our own, and we're looking to Lincoln to see how we can save our country. Thank you to Michelle Gans for showing us what the museum has to offer for students and the public. Hundreds of fans packed the Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies in Gatlinburg Saturday, June 7th for a chance to see Hollywood actor and musical performing artist Keegan Allen. The Pretty Little Liars star was there as part of Ripley's summer promotion series. We had a chance to speak with Allen who says he appreciates all the support he gets from his fans. No, I am. I'm so grateful. The support is unbelievable for the show and for my career in general. Um, when I did, the, I just did a play in New York, and every night there was, you know, hundreds of people that showed up to support the show, and uh, I couldn't be more grateful and more happy with everybody just being there, kind of, and being just just a strong rock of support um, all throughout since the beginning, and and with Pretty Little Liars and everything, it's just been really a blessing. So thank you guys so much. To see the aquarium celebrity schedule, go to www.ripleyaquariums.com forward slash Gatlinburg for more information. Throughout the following weeks here on LMU Tri-State News, we will be bringing you candidate introductions for the county mayor position, sheriff position, and district attorney. The order that they will be airing will be in alphabetical order beginning with the mayor candidates followed by the sheriff and district attorneys. The candidates. Here are the first two candidates with their introductions. To a special segment of LMU Tri State News. I'm here with one of the candidates running for election in August here in Claiborne County. Now, would you like to introduce yourself to the community and tell us what position you're running for? My name is Casey Anders, and I'm running for the uh, mayor of Claiborne County. I'm son of Grant and Ruby Anders of Tazewell lived here all of my life and my daddy run a business in New Tazewell or Tazewell and and uh, I've run the business too helped him so I know a little bit about running running things you know mm -hmm. how to keep them get them keep them going okay so do you feel that's one of the things that qualifies you to run for the position yes uh, uh, I graduated from Claiborne County High School in 1965 I've here, lived here all my life, and uh, I, I'd like to see our county grow. Mm -hmm. It needs to grow. Mm -hmm. It needs to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to be in there to where I can see and get things moving. Okay. So if elected, what will be your focus in office? Well, my focus is uh, jobs, for one thing. Mm -hmm. Our county needs jobs, needs factories. We need to uh, leadership uh, that someone that will uh, call and, and work at it every single day and try to get jobs in here for the people of Claiborne County, 
the people is my first uh, goal is to focus on them and and our young kids. We need jobs for our young kids. Uh, I substitute at Claiborne County High School and the students are all the time wanting to know where they can get them a job. We need to work on that. We need to get stuff going for mm -hmm. our kids in Claiborne County. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about while you're here? Yes, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, grants. Uh, if I'm elected as your county mayor, I will work every day and I will work after every grant I can get a hold of and uh, and call these factories and people that may want them to come into Claiborne County to uh, give our people jobs. We've got people here in Claiborne County that needs and would like to have a job. Mm -hmm. And we've got our young kids, like I told you, that uh, needs to work. And we've got people that will work and they need to, we need to get the, get the county going forward instead of backwards. I told somebody the other day the only time I'm going to back up is when I'm hooking to the plow. And I'd like to uh, tell the people of Claiborne County, if I'm elected, I will work for you. I won't work for myself. I'll work for you. And uh, they was a man the other day told me, too, I was talking to him, and he said that the county will never move forward. Well, I say it can and it will with the right leadership. Mm -hmm. And I'm the man to lead it on. I'm the oldest one of the ones that's running, been here the longest, and I know a lot of things that our county needs, our schools needs repairing. Mm -hmm. Why can't we get our young kids to working and do work, do that kind of work, help rebuild and, and get this county to moving forward instead of backwards? That's right. All right, and that's going to do it for this segment. Uh, don't forget, election is coming up on August 7th. Stay right here. We'll be back. Hi, welcome to a special segment of LMU Tri-State News. We are going to sit down with each candidate each week, and today we have the mayor of Claiborne County. Can you tell us about your current campaign? Oh, uh, yes. I'm the mayor of Claiborne County, and I'm running for re-election. Mm -hmm and uh, I'm very proud to be the mayor. I, say, I think that it's a great honor that I have uh, uh, been able to serve the people and uh, they have really been a blessing mm -hmm. and had to work for the last four years for them. And I'm very proud of the accomplishments in the last four years and looking forward to this re-election and being re-elected so I can continue on with the work for the people of Claiborne County. Okay. Um, so, in your four years, what do you feel qualifies you to run for the mayor? Well, in the four years that I've been there, I feel that the qualifications come that uh, what we have accomplished and the work that we uh, have worked in, and people have to realize that you've got 21 commissioners that you have to work together with, and you've got other boards in that in the county that we have to work very uh, close together and that to make things work for Claiborne County mm -hmm. and go ahead <clears throat> Well, if if reelected what is going to be your focus the next four years? Well, if reelected I've got uh, articles in the paper that's showing all the uh, Things that has happened that has been completed in the last four year and I will continue to work hard for the people of Claiborne County. Mm -hmm. We have had no tax rate increase in the last four years, and there will not be one in the next four years. And we have paid on the debt of Claiborne County in the last four years of my term, $14,850,000. And I feel that's a great accomplishment. And also the Covenant uh, Health has taken over the Claiborne County Hospital, which is Fort Sanders. and. Uh, we did that because of the change in the medical fields and all that. There are just so many changes. And to make sure that we always have a hospital for our people in Claiborne County and also to make sure that the uh, employment for the workers would always be there. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to tell the community a little bit about yourself real quick? Well, my name is Jack Daniels. I'm the 
Claiborne County Mayor, and I want to thank each and every one in Claiborne County, each and every one that's been into my office, everybody that I've met, and I've, I've treated everybody fair down through the last four years, and I've always said that my door has been open, and I will continue to work hard, and I would appreciate everyone's vote in Claiborne County, and I believe the proof is in the records, and I have it. I have proof on paper, which is being ran in the Claiborne County Progress and stuff for the next two months. And I just really appreciate this opportunity to be here at LMU with you all. Coming up after the break, Adam Plyler tells you what Logan Sawyer accomplished, a feat no LMU baseball player has accomplished since 2008. That's next on LMU Tri-State News. For pleasure, Sleep Inn and Suites of Middlesbrough, Kentucky invites you to dream better here. Located at the foothills of the Cumberland Gap, Sleep Inn and Suites offers luxurious rooms equipped with microwave fridge combo, desk, ergonomic chair, wireless internet, and 32-inch flat screen TV. While staying with us, visit our fitness center, wake up to our complimentary hot breakfast bar, or have a bedtime snack with our fresh baked cookies. Sleep Inn and Suites, located off Highway 25E, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interests at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Welcome to LMU Tri-State Sports, I'm Adam Plyler. Only six players in LMU baseball history were selected in the MLB draft. Logan Sawyer raised that number to seven as he was selected in the 29th round by the Colorado Rockies in the 2014 MLB draft over the weekend. Sawyer becomes the first player since Tawain Wills was taken in the 28th round in the 2008 draft. The Knoxville, Tennessee native compiled a seven and four record this season pitching 74 and two-thirds innings while striking out 66 batters. Sawyer will most likely begin his professional career with the Tri-City Dust Devils, the short season A ball affiliate of the Rockies. Congratulations to Logan Sawyer. We wish you a very prosperous professional career. Staying with LMU Athletics, the Josh Shirt Summer Basketball Camp Series began last week with over 30 kids from various ages learning basketball skills from the coach and some of his players. Schertz tells us that these kids are not only learning basketball skills, they learned a couple of life lessons as well. Well, we're having a individual camp this week, or you know, and, and so what we're doing is having youth of uh, the tri-state area in. We're up about, about 30 kids in here this week, and we do two of these uh, during the summer. Chance for us to kind of interact with uh, uh, kids in the area, get them interested in basketball. A lot of these kids have never played before, or maybe it's their, you know, are very young in their development. So hopefully creates a, a lifelong affair with not only uh, basketball, but with LMU and, and, and LMU basketball. We hit on a lot of the core values that uh, we think uh, are, are important to our program, and hopefully important to success for them, uh, whether at, at home or, or different areas. And uh, so we've had a really good group, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, kids kind of getting and understanding what we're doing. And, and, and obviously, like I said, imparting some of the core values of our program uh, and helping sharing those with those kids. For more information on all summer athletic camps, visit the athletics webpage at www.lmurailsplitters.com. 
Owen Beck is a familiar name around the Tri-State area. Before he settled down in Middlesboro, Beck was a heavyweight boxing champion. Beck opened a new boxing training facility in Middlesboro called Fist to Fire Boxing Club, which has classes for all age ranges and all athletic abilities. The former champion talks with us about his club and some of the classes which are offered. Well, we're standing right now at uh, Fist to Fire Boxing Club. I'm right here in Middlesboro, Kentucky. Right now, some of the classes are um, like boxing, you know, regular boxing. So I've got quite a few amateur boxers and their classes from 3.30 to 5.30, uh, Monday through Friday. Then I do have a kickboxing class. And they can uh, reach me either on Facebook or um, stop down here at the gym. Otherwise, my phone number is 606 area code 670-5826. That's it for sports. After the break, Monique Derrico and Joe Lewis tell you what summer blockbusters are making their way to theaters this week. That's when you come back on LMU Tri-State News. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Tazewell, and New Tazewell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. When you're traveling throughout the Tri-States, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro. With nearly 60 rooms to choose from, fitness center, full complimentary hot breakfast bar, and seasonal pool, Holiday Inn Express of Middlesboro is all about catering to your travel needs. Our rooms are all equipped with flat screen TV, refrigerator, microwave, and we're conveniently located just seconds from the area's attractions. When you're on the road, stay smart at Holiday Inn Express. Located on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. Make reservations today by calling 606-248-6860. With this week's useless trivia question, you're going to need your spidey senses. What famous scene in the original Spider-Man movie did Tobey Maguire execute without the help of any computer-generated imagery? Expect the answer at the end of the segment. For our top entertainment stories, Ann B. Davis, better known as Alice from the hit TV show The Brady Bunch, died Sunday, June 1st. The 88-year-old actress hit her head during a fall suffering a subdural hematoma and never regained consciousness. The Brady Bunch debuted in 1969 and aired for five years with Davis as Alice, the housekeeper for the Bradys. On screen, her character was what kept the family together with her witty one-liners and cheerful attitude. The Emmy-winning actress was put to rest at the St. Helena's Columbarium and Memorial Gardens in Bernie, Texas. A lawsuit has been filed claiming that the iconic Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven, was far from original. The suit filed on May 31st was brought up by the estate of the late Randy California against the surviving members of Led Zeppelin and their record label. CNN reports that the copy infringement case alleges that the Zeppelin song was taken from the single Taurus by the 1960s band Spirit, for whom California played lead guitar. Take a listen for yourself. Here's the Led Zeppelin Stairway to Heaven. Now listen to Taurus by Spirit. Are the chords just similar or is this plagiarism? Philadelphia lawyer Francis Alexander McAlafee, who is representing California, stated to Bloomberg Businessweek, it's been a long time coming. The idea behind this is to make sure that Randy California is giving a writing credit on Stairway to Heaven. The case is ongoing. Brad Pitt was punched in the face at the world premiere of Maleficent. While signing autographs and supporting fiance Angelina Jolie, a man dove over the fan barrier and punched Pitt in the face on the way down. The man was later identified as Vitaly Sediuk, a Ukrainian Hollywood prankster. If you don't remember him, this was the man that face planted into the crotches of Bradley Cooper and Leonardo DiCaprio, kissed Will Smith, and attempted to put his head under America Ferreira's dress at the 2014 Cannes Festival. Pleading no contest to battery, Sediuk was sentenced to three years probation, given 20 days of community labor in order to undergo a year of psychological therapy. 
In addition to this, according to E! News, he was ordered to stay at least 500 yards away from all red carpets, movie premieres, and entertainment events in the future. Stay tuned. After the break, Joseph Lewis tell you what to expect this week on the silver screen. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Hello, I'm Joseph Lewis, bringing you all the latest information in the world of movies. Tops at the box office last weekend included the young adult drama The Fault in Our Stars, which opened at number one with an impressive $48 million. Rounding out the top three were Maleficent, holding strong with $33 million and bringing its total domestic gross to $127 million, and newcomer Edge of Tomorrow with $29 million. Coming to theaters this weekend are two highly anticipated summer movie sequels. First up, Hiccup and Toothless are back in How to Train Your Dragon 2, the long-awaited sequel to DreamWorks' highly successful first outing. Jay Baruchel returns as Hiccup, along with his dragon companion Toothless, and this latest adventure has the pair being forced into yet another battle as ferocious hunter Drago assembles an army of dragons to take over the island of Burke. Matters become even more complicated when Hiccup is unexpectedly reunited with his long-lost mother, Valka, voiced by Kate Blanchett. Gerard Butler also returns as the voice of Hiccup's father, the intimidating Stoic the Vast. How to Train Your Dragon 2 premieres this Friday, June 13th. Also coming to theaters is 22 Jump Street, in which unlikely heroes Schmidt and Jinko return for more action and hilarious antics when they are assigned to go undercover as college students in order to take down a group of nefarious drug dealers. Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum return as the ill-prepared policemen and will be shooting their way onto theater screens June 13th. Now playing in theaters is Edge of Tomorrow, a new action thriller from Born Identity director Doug Lehman, starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. Set in a world in which mankind is at war with an alien species known as the Mimics, Edge of Tomorrow finds Cruise playing Major William Cage, a military reserve officer forced against his will into battle. After being doused with Mimic blood during the initial conflict and actually being killed, he wakes up at the start of the previous day and realizes that he is stuck in a time loop. Anytime Major Cage dies, his life will reset to the morning before the battle, giving him a chance to do it all over again and come one step closer to defeating the aliens. Major Cage acquires an ally with fellow soldier Rita Vratasky, played by Emily Blunt, who reveals to him that she was once stuck in a similar time loop herself. Co-written by usual suspect scribe Christopher McQuarrie, Edge of Tomorrow sets up this complex time travel scenario in a way that makes the audience pay close attention but never confuses. The plot unavoidably echoes the comedy classic Groundhog Day in some respects, and like that film, Edge of Tomorrow finds both poignancy and a surprising amount of humor in its repetitious scenario, ensuring that the proceedings never become tedious to sit through. Director Lehman handles the numerous action sequences in his uniquely kinetic fashion, and the CGI is top of the line, especially where the all-too-convincing aliens are concerned. Edge of Tomorrow often feels like a video game brought to life, far more so than most movies that are actually based on video games. Tom Cruise is his usual likable self, creating an everyman personality that the audience can easily root for, and Emily Blunt provides a brazen, world-weary foil to Cruise's terminally perplexed man out of time. Harry Potter's Brendan Gleeson makes a memorable supporting turn as Cage's general, and Bill Paxton provides welcome comic relief as a tough-as-nail sergeant. Edge of Tomorrow is a solid summer blockbuster that's worth seeing, delivering an engaging story and exciting action in an intelligent and creative package. And if Edge of Tomorrow doesn't satisfy your Tom Cruise craving, now available for streaming on Netflix Instant is the 2001 psychological thriller Vanilla Sky. A remake of the Spanish-language film Open Your Eyes, Cameron Crowe's harrowing drama features Cruz as spoiled rich kid David Ames, whose charmed life is brought to a screeching halt when his face is disfigured in a horrible car accident. Cameron Diaz and Penelope Cruz co-star as David's alluring lovers, both of whom may have played an integral role in the event, and Kurt Russell plays the psychiatrist who helps David put the pieces of his life back together. Vanilla Sky is a masterpiece of storytelling and filmmaking, spinning an incredibly intricate story of heartbreak and regret through the filter of high-minded science fiction, visualized in an elaborate, pop culture-infused fashion. The plot may leave some viewers' heads spinning, but the images and emotions Crow and Cruise capture throughout the film are unforgettable. That's all for this week in the world of movies. We'll be back after these messages.
If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The Wheel Deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's Express Car Wash, open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. In local entertainment, the Best of Bluegrass Festival in Lexington, Kentucky has kicked off. Initiated last year, it's a celebration of Kentucky's native sound in the heart of bluegrass. This week-long musical event starts June 9th and ends on June 14th. The festival features nightly performances, workshops, and community events. Every night features a different band in a different venue. You might even recognize the sounds of Special Consensus, the Grammy-nominated Acoustic Bluegrass Band. They play Monday, June 9th at 7 p.m. Admission is $10. All other performances throughout the week have free admission. To see who's playing each night and directions, visit www.bluegrasslex.com. The 2014 Singing News Solid Gospel New Artist Search is now over, and the live final show will be filmed in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. You could be a part of this live audience on June 13th and 14th at the Smoky Mountain Convention Center on the Parkway in Pigeon Forge. Hotel getaway packages start at only $198, and each one includes lodging for both Friday and Saturday nights, tickets to the new artist concert on Friday night at 7 p.m., tickets to the talent search finals on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., where you will get to vote on the winners, and the package includes tickets to the Talent Search Awards show featuring the winners in Gold City Saturday night at 7 p.m. Gold City is a legendary gospel men quartet that's been around for 42 years. To be a part of all this excitement, call 1-800-523-3919 and ask for the Singing News Talent Search Package or visit www.singingnews.com forward slash new artists. Also happening this weekend in Pigeon Forge is the Oak Ridge Boys, performing Saturday at 3 and 8 p.m. at the Country Tonight Theater. The four-part harmony and upbeat songs of the Oak Ridge Boys have produced dozens of country hits, and a number one pop smash earned them a Grammy, Dove, CMA, and ACM awards. Their hits include Elvira, I'm Settin', Fancy Free, Bobby Sue, and American Maid. Tickets are only $39.95 plus tax. To reserve your spot, call 1-800-792-4308. This week wraps up the Knoxville Film and Music Festival. Conveniently located in downtown Knoxville, the festival features a 24-hour film competition, live music performances, and world premiere screenings. The epicenter of the festival is Historic Market Square, where cafes, street musicians, and shops keep the festival goers company. The home of the Knoxville Film and Music Festival is Scruffy City Hall, a cine pub and medieval music hall that features a state-of-the-art screening facility. The 24-hour film fest entries will be screened on June 14th at the historic U.S. Cellular Stage at the Bijou Theater. Don't forget, events are also taking place all throughout the week. If you'd love to hear some live music and watch indie films, visit www.knoxvillefilms.com for a complete schedule and ticket prices. So, are your spidey senses tingling with the answer to the useless trivia question? If you guessed the lunchroom scene, then you are correct. In the original Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire filmed the lunchroom scene with no added computer imagery, meaning he actually caught the contents of Mary Jane's tray. The director added a tacky substance so that the tray would stick to his hand. We can all guess that that scene, very long, that scene took very long to film. There you have it. Filling in for Tiffany Duncan, I'm Monique Derrico, keeping you up to date on the world's entertainment. And that is going to do it for this week's LMU Tri-State News Update. Thank you for joining us. For everyone behind the scenes, I'm Ashley Hurley.